Welcome back. All right, so when this deal was announced yesterday, I didn't really have the time to set up a board and get into all the weeds with it because, uh, of course, we had games starting up pretty quickly thereafter. And so here we are today to talk about the Calgary Flames and the arena deal that's done, but not quite done. It's, it's done, and yet it's interesting because when we look back at the arena deal that fell through, this is significantly more expensive. Now, it also feels like it's more involved, that it's a bigger project than the first project. But yeah, it's going to cost a lot of money. And the city has come out and said, hey, it's all in cash. So, okay, it's it's still, it's a lot of money. Uh, and there's no solid timeline for construction. So I think they're aiming for a 2027 opening for the new building. One thing that's not really being debated is whether or not to replace the saddle dome and the answer is yes you kind of have to replace the saddle dome the saddle domes run down at this point by nhl standards and there's been estimates of as much as 50 million dollars to maybe refit the building and try to fix it up the roof being a big problem as well and the idea of maybe replacing the roof for the saddle dome being a possibility however if you do that it could take up to two years to get the new roof on the saddle dome and, and to make it work. As as weird as that roof looks, and as eye-catching as it is, it's it's not conducive to great acoustics for concerts. And so it, it's it's been talked about for years as needing replacement. Uh, so it's, it's going to cost you a ton of money either to fix the saddle dome to make it basically where the NHL is happy, uh, or you could just build a new building. And it's easier to build a brand new building where you're going to have all of the state-of-the-art everything. What's interesting is looking at how the last deal fell apart and where it fell apart. And it was cost overruns. It was, okay, we agree on this amount of money. Got it. Okay, now there's there's some extra extra money coming in. There's extra money going out. More money going out. Okay, now we got to pay for this. And so it, it got to the point where city council was like, well, we don't want to pay for this. And the Flames were like, well, we're not paying for this. And both teams walked away. And that was when the deal was at around the $600 million mark, which would have cost the city about $300 million. And I've seen the city paid about $16.5 million altogether in a deal for that last arena that just didn't happen. So a lot of money went out there. Now, the, there's an arena being built. There's also a smaller community rink that would be built with this and a suite of public amenities and public infrastructure, meaning hotels and retail. Because arenas alone do not generate those kinds of revenues. Uh, arenas alone will not get you your money back. If the government's looking to get their money back, it's going to be through, I mean, could be through taxes, right? Uh, that that sometimes has been known to be a thing. Um, I remember when the GST was was temporary in Canada. Oh, good times. Anyways, um, it's just, just for now. Just for now. And, and then it was, we really do like this money. So it's permanent. And so the public amenities infrastructure, it's just a matter of trying to make sure that you're going to make some money back, that it's going to be a money generator. Um, and I, I've talked about that in videos before, where arenas alone, just it it's, does not justify the cost. There are no preliminary designs. So if you're wondering what the building's going to look like, just, I don't know, draw something up and send it to the Alberta government. Maybe if they like it, maybe you can get yourself a little bit of cash. Uh, because there are no preliminary designs as of yet. So comparing this to, to the Arizona situation we're looking at, Arizona's got the proposed building and they're, they're further ahead. So Calgary's behind where Arizona is in this category. The difference being, of course, that the Flames aren't losing money at the same rate. There's been discussions of how much money they make, how much money they don't, and whether or not they, they, they actually get uh, money from the revenue sharing that the NHL has. But either way, uh, once this goes through, that wouldn't be a problem. They would be one of the richer teams in the NHL, you would think with a brand new building in this whole district around it. And they were referring to it a lot as the district in, in what they were saying with the press yesterday. This district is going to be important to the city. And I don't doubt that. I don't doubt that this can really rejuvenate the city of Calgary as the new arena and the surrounding area did for Edmonton. That absolutely helped that city. So the costs are, 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 are thusly. Uh, the city is paying $537.5 million. Now, originally, it was $275 million for the old building deal that fell through, and we'll talk about that in a bit. So it's it's significantly more money. But like I said, the mayor says, well, it's all in cash. Who has that kind of money on hand? Anyways, I, I know what they're saying. I know what they mean by that. But either way, um, it's a lot of money. 
And the Flames themselves are paying $356 million, and if I'm reading it right, it's over the next 35 years. So the Flames really come out of this with a great deal. Uh, they, they don't have to worry about uh, how they're going to come up with that kind of money. Uh, the province is paying $330 million, and that's where things get sticky. The provincial money is where things get kind of sticky in this deal, and it is not 100% done. Uh, in that... There's an Alberta election coming. It hasn't been officially declared yet, but it is coming. And uh, the the current premier, Danielle Smith, which is always weird because I had a girlfriend with that name in, in elementary school, uh, which I can say because that's a very generic name. And so it's always odd to me when a generic name you know, that matches up. It's not the same person. It's not. And I, I don't have any inside information, I swear. But the election's coming. And Calgary is seen as a battleground location. So what better way for the province to kind of say, hey, um, so here's this money. Um, there's an election coming up. You know, I'm, I'm promising you guys $330 million. It'd be great if you guys could vote for me. So there's, there's sort of that. And I've seen online some people saying this is great. This is fine. I don't mind public funds going to this. I have also seen I'm not going to vote for this party because of this deal. So this absolutely is not necessarily a 100% done deal from the provincial side. And if that provincial money falls through, then what? So the province's contributions have to be approved by provincial cabinet. And when is that? After the election. Right. So this is this is honestly either either it's a master stroke of genius to get yourself reelected or it, it's, it's going to be seen as a gaffe. It's going to be one of those things we look back on and see it as a gaffe. Because the opposition hasn't rubber stamped this at all. And uh, Rachel Notley, who would likely be the premier in the event that Daniel Smith loses, trying to stay out of the government side of things as much as possible, but in this case I have to mention it, uh, it has Rachel Notley has not said, oh yeah, we, we would put that through. She said we would need to look at all the details. We would need to look at what those costs are and whether or not it makes sense for the province, right? Because basically it's the entire province paying for that building in Calgary. And we will get to why people don't like that idea in general. Uh, Gary Bettman has already weighed in on this. Because of course he has. Uh, he he was in Calgary telling him, hey, this saddle dome's not good enough. And you guys need to replace this back when the other deal was, you know, in the process. And with the new one that's been announced, he's already told him, hey, you guys will be in rotation for the draft and the All-Star game. So... I guess there's that. And those are revenue generators, the draft and the All-Star game. I don't know how much revenue that generates locally. I'd be fascinated to know <clears throat> if the All-Star game is as big of an attraction money-wise as the NHL kind of makes it out to be. Like, hey, we'll give you an All-Star game. We'll give you a draft. Uh, I, I I would be really curious to see what the numbers are in terms of what that generates for for your your, your, your city, right? Does it really make a huge difference? Now, the last arena deal fell through. And it was around $600 million and the cost kept going up. And finally, both sides just walked away because they couldn't agree on who was going to pay for what. And they were getting mad about cost overruns and who's going to pay for the sidewalks. I'm not paying for sidewalks. Well, we're not paying for sidewalks. Yeah, it was that ridiculous. Uh, and so 2019 deal cost, would have cost the city $275 million in the 50-50 split. At least it was a $550 million deal to start with. And then it bloated to over $600 million. Well, we're starting at $1.22 billion for this one. And in all likelihood, we're going to see cost overruns. We're going, it's just, that's how it works. Every project that I've seen that has involved any kind of government, anything, um, when it comes to, to the funding, you will hear about, hey, so there's some cost overruns. Um, I remember the Olympics here in Vancouver. There were obviously going to be cost overruns. Uh, any buildings, uh, remember uh, uh, the uh, Expo 86, all the cost overruns. You have to expect that. So I, I thought it was odd when the deal fell through a couple years ago because, well, yeah, there's going to be cost overruns. That's just, that's how that's going to work. We, we estimate we can build this for $50. We can't, but we're going to estimate that so people people agree to work with us. So the Saddle Dome, as I said, needs major renovations if you were going to try to keep it and not in a way that works, not in a way that people are going to want to do it. And it, it, it really does, the, the clock is ticking on the Saddle Dome itself and its usability. And so uh, the one thing that I found odd was the wording of this too, where they're like, uh, you know, the rivers. And I thought, well, I, I hope this arena won't flood. 
I, I would hope that this building would be built in such a way that it won't flood, but again, maybe that's just that's just the nature of the beast and that's where they're going and all that fun stuff. So they're working with the, the stampede as well. That's where they're buying the, the land through. The stampede's allowing this deal to go through. Uh, obviously, if you have a brand new district that's going to bring in a lot of tourist dollars, that helps the stampede as well. Uh, the stampede generates a ton of money for Calgary. So them being on board should bode well for the project. But one thing that's sticking with people today too uh, is the fact that Murray Edwards is reportedly worth $2.6 billion. Uh, with a guy being worth $2.6 billion, uh, I, I don't know that you should have to have a city and a province paying for it. I don't think you should have to have that. So I, I understand the frustration that people feel uh, about this about this deal. I, I don't know whether or not this is going to go through, and I don't know what happens if in the provincial election we see a change in who's controlling things and who's running things because it, it is one of those things with sports it feels like such a minor thing but it's not do you want to be remembered as the person in charge when that team left town uh whether it's mayor whether it's premier or if you're in the states governor mayor as well right so do you really want to be the one that that says hey so this deal that we've been looking at for about 10 years and trying to make happen we finally got it well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna nix it because we don't like the amount of cost. So we'll see, and we'll see what kind of timeline we get on the building, what it's gonna look like, what that whole district is gonna look like. Because right now it is just this kind of idea, this idea of of what Calgary might be able to build with 1.22 billion dollars. Um, I would I wouldn't mind one. Po I'm just gonna say I wouldn't mind 1.22 billion dollars. I could probably put up a really nice building probably be pretty nice and any of the rest of that money I would put it in a very very safe spot but we'll see what happens with with Calgary in this this scenario because while the NHL doesn't want to move any teams it's been made clear that the Saddle Dome just doesn't work it 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 does not work for the National Hockey League and it is seen as kind of a temporary home until they get this straightened out so let me know your thoughts, and especially in the event that you're living in Alberta, does this change how you're looking at the upcoming election at all? And if 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 so, does it make you less likely to vote for, more likely to vote for a certain party? Uh, how do how do you feel about dollars from taxpayers going to uh, fund these arenas? And again, it's not just the arena. There's more going in than just the arena, but. Yeah, it, it's not 100% done deal as of yet, and so that's why I felt like it needed more of a, a deep dive look today, the day after the announcement rather than yesterday. So let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.